This is the fifth video in the series of fundamentals. It covers the most basic way to solve an equation numerically. It goes over the concept of what a fully representative number is versus its floating point approximation. The magic procedure here is F solve for floating point solve. Let's get started. Before we start using F solve, I want to go over the concept of a fully representative value versus a floating point approximation. Here are three numbers. One of them is the ratio of two whole numbers. The other two are irrational numbers. Maple will keep this representation as long as possible until you get to a floating point approximation calculation. Of course, we can always calculate the floating point values by using evaluate as a floating point, open parentheses, the list of numbers. Let's get to how to use F solve. I'll begin, of course, any problem with the word restart. Here's my equation. The tangent of the sine of x is equal to x to the third minus one. I'll put a colon there since it's easily readable. So our solution must be equal, well, traditionally we would say solve, and we might even include the fact we're solving for x. Unfortunately, we get this root of. So let's look at all the values. What are all the values of our solution? What a mess. Difficult to understand and beyond the scope of this series. This is where F solve comes into play. Solution colon equals F solve of our equation for X. Ah, a much better solution. A reminder, again, this is an equation. That means the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side to which we have assigned, that's what the colon equals, this to EQ. Therefore, our solution has been assigned the value 1.35. Let's check to see if our solution makes sense by plotting both sides of the equation. So I'm going to plot, open square bracket, because I'm going to give it a list of items, the left-hand side of our equation, comma, the right-hand side of our equation, close square bracket, those are the two things we're plotting, comma x equals 0 dot dot 2, and we'll put some interesting options in, we'll make sure the thickness is large, and we'll even put a legend in by saying the left hand side is the tangent of the sine of x, and the right hand side is x caret 3 dash 1, close parentheses, close and we can see on this plot, the intersection occurs at about 1.35. You can learn more about plotting in the video number seven. I will also point out that we have now used the range expression, which is dot dot. Now let's look at another problem. This one will produce multiple solutions and some of which are complex. But here's the equation, equation colon equals x to the three minus one equals zero. Again, we'll put a comma in it. And now I'm going to shift enter, shift enter, solutions colon equals F solve our equation. And I'll say it reminds it with respect to X. And it gives an answer of one. But we know that there are actually three solutions to this equation. We don't see the complex answers. How do we solve for those complex answers? Well, we add the option complex. Equation, I'm sorry, solutions, colon equals, F solve, our equation, comma X, and add the word complex in. Ah, now you can see we get one, two, comma, three solutions. The first two are complex, and how do I know that? Is because this is big I, which represents the square root of minus one. That's how Maple represents the complex variable. So there's the real part, there's the imaginary part. I can even check to make sure that one of these solutions works, and I'm going to pick out the second solution and insert it back into the equation and see if we get the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So we'll call this the equation check, colon equals, we will evaluate our equation, comma, where x equals the solutions number two, open square bracket, two, close square bracket. Now you might say, oh, it doesn't look like zero equals zero, but this number is so small that 
it is essentially zero to the approximation that we've used 10 significant digits in our calculations. Let's look at another problem where we provide Maple some assistance in looking for the precise answer. The equation is colon equals sine of pi. I can hit pi, hit escape, and hit enter, divided by 4 plus x cubed, sorry, squared, times x plus or I can go over and select common symbol pi, divide by 5, close parentheses, to the square, uh, equals minus 1. Let's plot this particular function. And again, I'm going to use the left-hand side of procedure and the right-hand side procedure. And I'm going to say x is in the range from 0 dot two and the y is in range from minus two dot dot three and as you can see they cross in that range at about 1.5 so what is the solution for that x value colon equals f solve our equation for x hmm it gave an area that i don't want i want to know between zero and two and this is the value it returned. So let's help Maple by telling it specifically to solve the equation for x, where x is in the range from 0 dot dot to 2. And it returns a value which makes a lot of sense. This next example I have already written out. It consists of 2x times e to the minus x. And the other side of the equation is cosine. We're interested in the first three places where the two sides intersect. How do we get Maple to tell us these answers? Well, we can look at it and see this one is close to 1. So I'll call this x underscore underscore 1. Go to the right, colon equals f solve our equation. And now I'm going to say x is about equal to 1, and it returns that value. Let's do the second one, x underscore underscore 2, go to the right, colon equals f solve our equation, while x is approximately equal to 5. The other way I could also do that is x underscore underscore 2, colon equals f solve our equation, x is somewhere between 2 and 6. While this technique does get us the answers, it's a bit tedious. So let's see if we can extract all the solutions at once. Solutions call an F solve, open parentheses, equation. Again, we're going to give it the range from 0 to 10, and now we're going to tell it to return a maximum number of solutions using the ma option max souls equals 3. We could have asked it to return more solutions by adding in more values for the maximum number of solutions, but it still would return only three. At this point, you might ask, well, are there any solutions for x less than zero? Let's test. We play the same game as before, and we'll go from minus infinity, or put in the infinity, dot, dot, to zero. Max solutions will ask for 10 of them, and we get no response. That tells us there are no values that are where the blue line and the red line cross for values from minus infinity to zero. So what if we want to solve problems for which there are multiple unknowns? Here are a couple equations. Equation 1, colon equals x times y equals 2.4. Shift enter equation 2 is defined as the square root. I'll click on the square root button of x times y, or x plus, plus y equals pi. Shift enter, shift enter. Our solutions are f solve. Well, now we need to give it now a set of equations. So that means I use the set uh, delimiter, equation 1 comma equation 2. And we could leave it like that since there are only two unknowns and it would return that value. It will return it as a set of solutions. We could also go back and specifically ask for the set x and y and it would return the same answers. 
The second example that I've already plotted out for us consists of two equations. The first equation is listed in blue, and the second is in magenta. And I used from the plots package the plotting procedure implicit plot. I'm interested in this answer. So how do we solve for that? Solutions colon equals f solve open parentheses again. I have to give it the equations equation one and equation two And now what I want to make sure is that it returns only the region somewhere between zero and two and zero and two Curly bracket x is going to be from zero to two and y is going to be from zero to two So again using the range operator dot dot we make sure that it only looks within that range in the associated document, there are practice problems and solutions, particularly appropriate for those who are in physics or engineering. In addition, there's a section on troubleshooting. The next video is on user-generated functions.